Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashlyn. I am a first time mom to a little boy who just turned 15 months old. And we've been incorporating the Montessori method into the way that we raised him from the very beginning. And we've just been loving doing that. This video specifically, I'm going to be talking about schemas of play. And while those philosophies didn't originate specifically from Montessori and from the Montessori method, I think they align very closely as far as helping you observe your child and realizing what your child's going through and what they might be interested in. So the definition of a schema is a pattern of repeated behavior that your child is going to be doing and you can see this while they play especially and just in the way that they play, things that they're interested in, their thoughts and ideas about things. It's kind of like a framework of how their mind is currently working at the moment. Observing and following your child is one of the most common practices in the Montessori method. And so by doing this and stepping back and just observing what your child is doing, you'll notice patterns of things that they do repeatedly. And this could be just behaviors that you're noticing they're starting to do, like throwing, or you might be noticing they're starting to build towers or knock them down, or just do really repetitive types of behaviors that we can classify into these different schemas. And understanding like why they're doing these things and even understanding what schemas are and how to classify them can help you better prepare your environment to suit your child's needs in the moment and kind of redirect them to a toy or activity that follows that schema rather than say throwing their food from their high chair you could practice throwing in other ways so there are eight common schemas that lots of children's behavior can fit into the first one is the connecting schema if your child is currently in this one, they will be really interested in connecting things, seeing how they join together, maybe tying things up. They could really love playing with toys that follow suit with this, like connecting train tracks together, building things with Legos that snap together, or even trying to tie things up and contain them in that way. And in this kind of same category, you can see disconnecting with the connecting things, maybe taking things apart, and pulling things apart and just seeing how different objects fit together and then come apart. Most toddlers like the coming apart and destructive aspect more than putting together. But if you have an older child, you can see this, like I said, with the train checks and then putting those together. To support your child in this schema, offer lots of building type of toys, like Legos, train tracks. Legos makes smaller building versions like Duplos and Mega Blocks if you have a child that you don't want to give them the tiny little Lego pieces. And you can also offer them like different construction type activities, like gluing things and taping things so you could set up little crafts where you're focusing on gluing, taping, and just joining things together. And that will really suit their interest in the connecting and disconnecting schema. The next schema is the enclosing schema. In this one you might see your child just focusing on containing and enclosing things. So maybe you know having a barn with little fences they might build to keep all of their animals inside. They could build with blocks and build blocks in like a circle to make a cage for animals or people. And it can also include themselves and containing themselves, so maybe like boxes they'd be hiding in. And this one isn't focusing on like removing things from sight, more just creating boundaries and also organization. So they might just be having the sense of order for the first time and just organizing things in different container type things. If your child likes to contain and enclose themselves, look for things like the cardboard boxes like I mentioned. I know my son loves climbing in and out of just any sort of containers. We do big sensory bins on the floor and even sometimes more so playing with the sensory fillers, he'll just climb in and out of the bin. You can make forts out of things like couch cushions or if you have like a nugget couch to make like a little enclosure type thing they can go into. I know I've seen like little playhouses, miniature house type toys that can go in and shut the door so they're contained in something. If they like containing things with their toys and enclosing things that way, and get little pots and pans that they can put things in and put the lid on and like I said little fences for their animals little blocks they can pretty much use any of their toys to create little enclosures to focus on the enclosing schema the next schema is the enveloping schema this one can sound really close and is pretty close to the enclosing schema but in the enveloping one they're focusing on taking things out of sight so you might see them take a blanket and cover up some of their toys or build little houses out of blocks and hide toys inside and maybe put a door on so you can't see the toys anymore. And for themselves, they could be hiding in curtains or under blankets. So this one is more about removing something from sight and enveloping something that way, where the enclosing schema is more about containment, not necessarily hiding it. If your child is in the enveloping schema, 
offer lots of blankets and fabrics and things that they can wrap up their toys or hide under themselves. A common favorite in our house are these play scarves. My son loves hiding things under here and putting them on his own head. So these ones are a staple if your child is in the enveloping schema. You could also give them old envelopes and old mail that they could maybe write letters and then put the letters in the envelope or even just pretend ones. And you could also provide old empty cardboard boxes maybe that are smaller that they could put toys in and, and shut them so they can no longer see them. Next we have the orientation schema. In this one your child is focused on seeing things from different points of view and just seeing how the world works in different angles of themselves and toys. Children in the orientation schema might be doing things like hanging upside down or just like being upside down to get a different perspective on the world. They might pick up their toys and examine them from different angles. Maybe look inside something they've never looked inside before just to really see things from different perspectives. To support a child in the orientation schema, provide things that they can use to observe items from different angles. So things like magnifying glasses to magnify objects, they might really be interested in that, or binoculars to see things from far away. If you have an older child, they might like looking through a microscope to observe things that are tiny that they wouldn't normally see. You can take big pieces of furniture, like this toy shelf behind me, I could lay it on its back so it's just at a different angle and a child in the orientation schema would be very interested by that and kind of just displaying toys in different ways than you normally do. You could also help them hang upside down or hold them upside down. If you have like a climbing frame, you could support them doing that or show them how to be upside down and a child in the orientation schema would really enjoy all of those things. Next we have rotation. In this, your child will be interested in things that are circular or rotate and spin. They might really like washing your washing machine if you have like a front-facing one where they can see the clothes go around in a circle. They might really like twirling themselves. My son is currently in this schema and he loves just twirling all the time and making himself laugh that way. Round things that roll, like balls they might really, really like playing with. And maybe sitting in like an office chair and spinning around that way. Supporting a child in this schema, you could offer lots of things that rotate and spin. You could offer car type toys with big wheels that they could watch spin, anything that rolls and moves. You could make ramps and roll down cars, roll down balls and round objects and watch how they roll down something. And your child in this schema might also really enjoy mixing and stirring, so having them help you in the kitchen and incorporating this schema in that way could be pretty productive by stirring and mixing things and showing them how to move their hand in a circular motion. Next is a transportation schema. I think this is one of the most common ones. And in this, you'll see your child start to move objects from place to place. This could just be with their hands, holding things, or they might like loading up things into a container and then transporting toys that way. My son is also really interested in this schema. There's little random items like strewn about my entire house because he loves carrying things and hiding them and I love seeing evidence of his play that way if you just find little pieces of toys or activities in spots where you know they do not belong and that your child just transported them there. So to support your child in this schema, provide lots of opportunities for them to carry things. So it might be like bags, backpacks, boxes, handbags, anything that they can hold and load up with toys to bring around. Because it's not really about like where they're taking them, it's more that they just they enjoy the process of taking something somewhere. I would also provide lots of little pieces and maybe loose parts type toys so that they can load them up. So it might be like pom-poms, different coins and rings and anything that's like small little pieces they can scoop and take with them. This is also a great one to enjoy outside because you can bring a little backpack or bag outside with you and your child might want to load it up with rocks and sticks and leaves and carry that with them while they're outside. Okay, so I was editing this video and realized I completely missed one of these schemas. That's why everything is different, this is a different day. But real fast, I'll tell you about the positioning schema. Instead of making a separate video, you're gonna have to just deal with this clip being different. But in the positioning schema, your child will be focused on lining things up and putting their toys in a very specific way or pattern. They'll enjoy making sequences and just putting their toys or pretty much anything in just very certain ways and certain directions and might be upset if you try to clean up or move them out of the way or just change the way what they have done is positioned. To support this schema you could use loose parts to allow your child to create intricate little designs and sequences with those and other small toys like small dolls or cars. 
and they could use non-toy items as well and just focus on you know stacking them or organizing them I see lots of kids just take like a basket of even marbles or anything little and just make a straight line with that so they really just enjoy just like organizing their things in a specific way but that's all I have for the positioning schema so I'll go ahead and put you guys back into the actual video and the last scheme I'm going to be talking about and I think the most common and the one that causes parents the most maybe not concern but just you have to deal with the most is the trajectory schema and in this your child will be interested in seeing how things move throughout space so this might involve a lot of throwing things moving their own body throughout space running jumping climbing knocking things off the counter and the biggest one is throwing food from the high chair and another big one is playing with running water and running their hands under it and seeing how running water moves to support your child in this schema offer lots of things that they can throw safely so provide a basket of balls or stuffed animals or things that you don't mind them throwing around and demonstrate throwing those things instead of you know throwing their food from the high chair you could redirect it that way provide lots of opportunities for them to move their own body so running and climbing like I mentioned you know make sure and get outside and get out their energy and interested in the trajectory schema that way by understanding how their own body moves let them go on swings and slides at your local park and again make sure to incorporate some water play because kids in the trajectory scheme love playing with water and maybe pouring water you could create a little pour station where you have different containers of water they can pour out and create their own running water I think this one is the most common one for toddlers and young children just because it incorporates so much learning like learning about gravity learning about the way that their body moves and how they can make it move and how flexible they are how strong they are by doing different activities so I think there's just so much learning that is incorporated into this and it can seem frustrating as an adult to watch your child keep throwing things or you know running around crazy in your house but it's important to keep in mind for this and for all of these schemas that while super repetitive behavior can be sort of annoying as an adult really step back and understand that every time they are doing this repetitive behavior they are learning so by understanding the schemas and kind of grouping what your child's doing into certain categories you can really understand the way that they're learning in that moment and then redirect them to safer or things you're more comfortable with like the activities on the shelf or certain types of play that you know will interest them based on their interest in these schemas schemas are a natural part of play and development and just again really help you understand why your child is doing these repetitive behaviors and can explain why some children are so persistent and determined to do things the same way and in a certain way from a Montessori point of view by spotting and encouraging these type of patterns through play you're really observing your child and following their interest and you can meet that interest by providing them with ample resources to do these things in safer ways remember that pretty much anything a child does is because they are learning and want to learn they're not doing it to you know bother you or annoy you or make a mess they just want to learn and you can see that through these schemas by their repetitive behavior because their repetitiveness is what is cementing their learning for them so I love to encourage schematic play and encouraging my child to do these things it's also important to remember that your child could be involved in multiple schemas at the same time and could be in them for years and years some kids you know school age kids are still doing these type of schemas because it's just that repetitiveness that helps them learn they might just be doing these things in different ways or different difficulty levels but schematic play and these categories of different schemas you will see for years with your children so it's really important to understand them and know what your kids going through to help you be you know a better parent for them and prepare a better environment for them anyways I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you liked it make sure to comment and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss future videos like this you can go check out my other videos and see other Montessori type videos that I've done and explaining you know how we raise our son and how we modify the Montessori method to work for us as a small family at home but thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video bye guys